The benefit of Anki is that you're testing yourself through questions and it's through questions that you're going to be tested on in the exam. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense to me. So this week we're talking about Anki, which is an app that I literally swear by. And it has helped me to remember a lot more information from anatomy to different like subspecialty topics and things like that. So if you're interested, definitely subscribe for more content like this. Because I'm trying to make it a little bit more fun for you guys. Give me a like as well. And comment down below what you think and what other videos that you'd like me to film. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. I don't know if you guys already know this, but medical school is a madness because there is so much information that you have to learn and you have to learn it for your exams and you can't do it by cramming like that's just not going to happen you could probably cram something the day before your exams but the chance of you actually remembering it is going to be very very small so this is why i use anki because it helps me to train my brain like i'm doing like lifting and doing reps for my brain muscles <laughs> if that okay there's no muscles in your brain but you know what i mean and it helps me to stay consistent on what i'm learning and track what I'm not sure about in terms of the content and what I need to work on as well. And another thing is I realise that I'm a lazy learner. Like I don't want anything to be too complex when I learn it and I want to know that everything is in one place. And that's the good thing about Anki flashcards. But I'm a simple girl so I don't want any kind of complexity when I'm revising. I want to make it short and efficient. You don't have to use Anki. You can write a list of questions on a Google Docs document and test yourself every day. I used to do that but I didn't find that it was very efficient because I wasn't able to shuffle the questions or the order in which I was asking myself the questions. So that's why I went for Anki. One important thing is that when you are making flashcards, you have to commit to it. It's a bit like a relationship. You can't get out of it. And when you make that flashcard, you've got to make sure that you are reviewing that flashcard either the next day or a few days later or in a week's time because you don't want to forget any of the information that you have learned and you have to be realistic as well like you can't expect yourself to remember a whole piece of information from a specific lecture the following week the key thing is with Anki is to do reps every day that's the way whenever someone asks me Gaia how do you arise I tell them you've just got to do reps every day so you can get those abs in your brain um, by the end of the semester. Sounds silly, but it's just about brain training. You just gotta set aside one hour to revise old content every single day, and the more you do it, the quicker you'll be able to extract that piece of um, information, and it'll just be easier for you in the long run. There's this whole thing that Ali Abdal talks about in one of his videos that I can't remember the title of, but I'll link it down in the description box, and it's about the forgetting curve. And it basically says that the more reps you make, so the more times that you review the information, the more likely you're gonna to remember it and that's something that's always stuck with me since I watched that video because I realized that you can't just learn this stuff last minute it's not like your Spanish GCSE writing where you can just memorize it the day before and then you'll be fine for the exam it's it's nothing like that so the key point of this video is how I actually write my questions how am I breaking down a lecture to enhance my understanding so that when I review it, it just makes my life way easier. My Anki flashcards, they range from short questions where it's just like one word, two word answers to longer ones where I'm describing maybe the pathophysiology of something. I find this is really important because the short questions give you a little dose of that topic that you're talking about. Whereas the longer question forces you to think about the step-by-step -step process to get to the answer. So sometimes when I'm writing my questions, I try and think like an examiner. What could I be tested on? And if you're not sure about how you could possibly be tested, the key thing is to maybe go on to your university resources page. We have something called Blackboard at Leicester. This might vary from university to university. And you can have a look at some of the questions they might have uploaded as a PDF. And look at the style of the question and analyze it. Then you can tailor your questions to that. Another thing which I spoke about in one of my surviving your first and second year at medical school video, that was a really long title, is, if you're struggling to figure out what questions to even write, look at your learning objective. The benefit of Anki is that you're testing yourself through questions and it's through questions that you're going to be tested on in the exam. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense to me. Comment down below if it sounds weird. However, you can get into a bit of a hole with Anki. Because you are breaking apart a topic, it's very easy to not be able to link topics together. Anki doesn't allow you to give an overarching picture of what's going on in that condition. So what you could do is move away from Anki and summarize in your own way by drawing up a quick mind map to 
extract all the information and put it onto a piece of paper or you can write an overarching broad question where it could be what conditions make up acute coronary syndrome and then you can categorize it in that way the key thing is that you have to be really wary that sometimes by testing yourself by segmenting a topic can be quite confusing but you have to kind of take a step back and realize that there are other ways of revising too so Anki is just a small part of your revision in terms of what I do I have um, a laptop so I have downloaded Anki onto my Mac um, but before I bought my MacBook last year um, I actually had to buy the app for 20 quid off the Apple Store. Please don't ask me why it's that expensive, but for some reason, it's 20 quid. The way I like to think of it is that if I can spend 20 quid on a meal, then I should be able to spend 20 quid on my education. And I thought that I could explain how I organize my stuff as well, just so that you guys know exactly how to organize your work. So I've just whipped up um, Anki on my laptop, and basically, I'm just gonna show you how I organize it. So as you can see, I've got year one, got year two, got year three. Um, and so CPT is the pharmacology stuff. So I've put that at the top because I always need to be reviewing that. Year 1.1 is year one, semester one. Year 1.2 is year one, semester two. Year 2.1 is basically semester three for us and semester four as well. So I've broken it down into different semesters just to make it easier. And then below that is the different modules that we have in each semester. So we've got body logistics, HEP, MCBG, PASS. The year one, Eastern ones, semester ones are a bit random. And then it gets into the nitty gritty. So cardiovascular, infection, MEH, MSK, pathology. And obviously this is gonna vary from uni to uni. So don't go with what I've written, go with the modules that you have for that semester. So I quite like this because then you can subdivide it. So this is exciting. Um, if I pick out like head and neck, for example, I have broken it down into each lecture. So for some reason, numbering on Anki is a bit funny. So instead of doing lecture one, lecture two, I did lecture A, lecture B, lecture C, and then because A.1 was the first lecture of that day and A.2 is the second lecture. You can figure out your own way, but this is what worked for me so that it was chronological. Um, so within that, I wrote the title of the lecture. So this one is General Organization of the Head and Neck. And all the questions have been taken from the lecture that we were given. So whether it's with anatomy, whether it's pathophysiology, I've written as much as I can to help me summarize the whole lecture in a question format. I feel like such a nerd making a video about this, but the only reason is, is because it honestly has changed the way I revise and has made it so much easier. Like I could be sitting watching Netflix in the background, like on a very, very low volume so I don't get distracted. And I could be sitting on my sofa and I can whip out my iPad, for example, and do my flashcards on there. Or if I'm sitting at my desk like I am now, I can just type away as well. Or even better is that when I'm out and about, so for example, when I'm on placement, if there isn't anything exciting happening on the ward, I just go back to the doctor's office and I just sit on my phone, but I've got the Anki flashcard app there as well. And because everything syncs, I can spend maybe like half an hour learning about some form of medication so that I'm not wasting my time. Because it, especially when you're on placement, it's very easy to find yourself kind of sitting around doing nothing. So I always find that if I get some work done during my placement hours, when I get back home, I can just chill and watch more Netflix like I already do. So I hope you enjoy this video. And in addition to that, I hope it's maybe motivated some of you to just get up and revise if you've been sitting all day doing nothing. If you want other videos or have more questions about how I revise and stuff, um, do let me know. And one thing that I want to say, like a massive disclaimer, is like, I don't sit and revise all the time. It's only when I have a burst of energy I'm, I sit and try and do some kind of useful revision to get those reps in my brain. I think that brings us to the end of the video. Give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe, give it a share, give it a comment, give it everything, show all your love. And um, I will see you in the next video.